In this video, we will go over how to get started with making simple graphical user interfaces in Python using PyQt6. PyQt6 is a Python library that allows us to make graphical user interfaces. It has an extensive set of built-in widgets such as font dialogs, color dialogs, as well as basic input widgets such as buttons and drop-down menus. PyQt6 also has much more features and is more versatile than most other GUI libraries in Python such as TKinter. To install PyQt6, we will use the command pip install PyQt6 and this should install the latest version of PyQt for you. Once that's done, we will first get started by importing the necessary modules from PyQt6.qt widgets to get started on creating our first window. For now, we will need to import QMain window, which is the window we will add our widgets to later on, as well as Q application, which handles things like the initialization, settings, and something called the event loop, which we will look into later on. When creating an instance of Q application, we can pass in a list of options, but since we have none here, we can specify an empty list. We also create our main window. and use the show method on it because windows are by default not visible in PyQt. And we will also need to use the execute method on our application to start our event loop which essentially means to notify our application to start handling and reacting to events such as clicks or when the window has been resized. Now that we have our first window, we will go over some customizations you'll probably want to make with all of your applications. As for adjusting the size of our window, you'll probably only want to specify the minimum size of the window and let the user resize it if necessary. We can do this with the set minimum size method where the first argument is the width and the second is the height. We can also set the minimum width and the minimum height individually and let the contents of our window decide the length of the other. But for now, I'll just stick to setting the minimum size. If you do not want the user to resize the window, we can simply set a fixed size as well using the set fixed size method. To give our window a title, we can use the set window title method on our main window. To be able to set an icon for our window, we need to use the set window icon method. To be able to read image files and to be able to use them as icons in PyQt6, we need to import the QIcon class from PyQt6.QtGUI. This will allow us to read image files and be able to use them as icons in this case. I'll use a simple example icon which you can download as well from the GitHub link in the description below.
To fill our window, we will use widgets, which are essentially components that will allow the user to interact with our application or to view some sort of information. We will start by looking at the queue label widget, which can import from the QT widgets module. Queue label allows us to display text or images as a widget on our applications. For this example here, we will create a queue label with some example text first and then set it as the central widget of our window. For now, our window can only display one widget at a time, but in the next video, we will look at how to use layouts to show any amount of widgets using different layout structures. You might also want to change the alignment of our queue label, and we can do that by specifying a keyword argument when initializing a queue label object. You might be able to do this by specifying something such as center as a string to pass it as an option in other modules in Python. But in the case of PyQt, the way it works is that we need to specify an enumerated value to specify an option. And we can do this by importing Qt from PyQt 6.qt call. And then write in qt.alignment of flag dot align center and we have a few other options as similar. If you want to modify the font, such as the font size, we will first need to get the current font that the user is using. We can do this by using window.font which will return the current font that is on the window. This will be a queue font object that we can then modify and then set it back on the label. This queue font object has several methods to modify it, one of them being set point size. In this case, I will change the point size and set the font to bold as well. You will also need to set the font of the label to that font that we have modified to be able to apply those changes to the label's font. If you want to display an image in your application, you can also use QLabel. We can first start by setting an empty queue label to a label variable. We can then set the pixel map of the label, which is essentially setting its image using the dot set pixel map method. We can then set a pixel map object, but before we do that, we need to import queue pixel map from Qt GUI. And then inside of QPix map, we can initialize it with the path to our image. In this case, I will use the same application icon image. You might also want to resize the image, and we can do so by using the scale method. This is available on QPixMap objects and it returns a new PixMap object that has been resized. To use the dot scaled method, we need to specify the new width and height of the image. Then just want to specify the height of the new image, we can use the dot scale to height and then we can specify the height of the new image and then PyQt will automatically determine what the width should be to ensure the proportions are maintained. Now 
Now, another common widget in PyQt is the QPush button widget. This widget is a widget that allows us to accept click events from a user, which we will look at how to receive in a future video. For now, we can import it from Qt widgets and then initialize a new QPush button object. This string we initialize it with will be the text of the push button. Right now, the button takes up the entire window, but in the next video, we will look at how to use layouts to place multiple widgets and be able to resize them proportionally. We can also change the minimum size or the fixed size of the push button, just like our label as well. If we wanted to change the font size of the button, we can do the same thing of receiving the window's current font, changing its font size and whether it's bold or not, and then setting it as the font of the push button. And just something to note is that we need to call window.show and app.exec right after we have created all of our widgets because if we do it before, we will have a window that does not contain the widgets we wanted. That's about it for this video. In the next one, we will look at how to lay out our applications using layout managers as well as a few more widgets. And in future ones, we will also look at how to handle events if this video has helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe.